Hi, I'm Mike Fowler with the Simulink Solvers team. Today I'm going to talk about two new solvers in Simulink that you might find useful for the simulation of hybrid systems, ODE1B and ODEN. We'll start by taking a look at ODEN. To see where ODEN might be useful, I'll use this pulse width modulation or PWM example model containing Simscape electrical components. Taking a look inside this model, we can see the PWM subsystem inside which there are several relay blocks used to model the switching in this application. To obtain accurate simulation results for this model, it is essential to detect when the switching events occur for each of these relay blocks. This is because each switching event represents a discontinuity in the derivative function evaluated by the solver. In Simulink, we refer to these switching events as zero crossings. Now let's take a look at what happens when we simulate this model with ODE23T. We're going to open the solver profiler and simulate the model. In this statistics panel, we can see that about 3,000 zero crossings were detected. Note that each of these zero crossings is coming from one of the relay blocks inside the PWM subsystem we saw earlier. Zooming in on the step size plot, we can see that ODE23T needs to take several steps between zero crossing events according to the solver's step size control heuristics. ODE23T, like other Simulink variable step solvers, uses adaptive step size control to take as large of a step size as possible while still producing accurate simulation results. For models that contain frequent zero crossings like this one, adaptive solvers are sometimes unable to ramp up to a large step size, negating the benefits of adaptive step size control while unfortunately maintaining the overhead cost. These additional steps result in ODE23T taking about 67,000 total steps, but are not necessary to produce accurate simulation results and they can slow down simulation. ODEN was designed to help address this issue. Let's go back to the model and open the configuration parameters. We select ODEN from the variable step solver dropdown menu. ODEN uses non-adaptive integration or integration without step size control, similar to integration used in fixed step simulation. Instead of reducing step size to meet relative or absolute tolerance, ODEN will always attempt to use max step size and will reduce the step size only to capture zero crossing events or sample hits. To illustrate this, suppose that we have a simulation where the max step size is set to one and the model contains some zero crossing events pictured here. ODEN will always try to take a step size of 1 unless a zero crossing is detected, in which case the step size is reduced. Following this zero crossing, ODEN will take a step size of 1, followed by a smaller step size to capture this zero crossing, and then it will proceed again with a max step size of 1. Once we have selected ODEN, the integration method parameter becomes visible in the solver configuration panel. This parameter controls the formula used by ODEN to update the continuous states in the model. You may recognize that the list of integration methods in the drop-down menu is the same as the list of solvers available for fixed step simulation in Simulink. One new solver that appears in this list is ODE1BE, which is newly added in the 2020A release. ODE1BE is also available for use with fixed step simulation via the fixed step solvers drop-down. ODE1BE is a fixed cost implementation of the backward Euler method. It serves as a low cost alternative to ODE14X which is also an implicit method, but has a higher computational cost per step. You may find ODE1B useful for models with continuous states from both Simulink as well as Simscape or Simscape Multibody. ODE1BE is particularly useful when your model requires the use of an implicit method, but other modeling constraints such as frequent zero crossings limit the solver step size. Since our example model fits this mold, we will choose ODE1BE as the integration method for ODEN. Now let's open the solver profiler again and run a simulation with ODEN configured with ODE1B. The first thing we should notice is that the simulation only took about 7,000 steps. Recall that with ODE23T, the simulation took about 67,000 steps. Zooming in on the step size plot, we can see where ODEN saves steps versus ODE23T. In between zero crossing events, ODEN takes step sizes equivalent to the max step size setting unlike OD23T, which took many unnecessarily small steps in between zero crossings. This is a huge reduction in the total number of steps that leads to faster simulation times. 
For this model, ODE23T takes about 18 seconds to simulate, while ODEN only takes about 5 seconds and produces similar results. That's all for this demo. Hopefully, you find ODN useful for variable step simulations of models containing frequent switching, such as the one we looked at today. For fixed step simulation and real-time code generation, you may also find ODE1BE useful as a low-cost implicit solver. Thanks, and just a reminder that all the features shown in this video are available in R2020A.